Okay, now let's get into opacities. 6.7, the opacity tables. Opacity conductors are contained in table 310.16. We okay with that? Yep. The temperature and opacity correction and the adjustment factors are applied to the opacity based on the conductor insulation temperature rating. Where does that say that? Well, what I'm trying to say is this. When you're making these ampacity corrections, are you using the terminal ratings of 60 degrees C for 100 amps or less and 75 degrees C for more? Or are we basing it on the 90 degrees C column? We have not been talking about the 90 degrees C column at all in this entire program. So where does it tell us that when we make this impasse correction and adjustment that we're actually using the insulation rating at 90 degrees C, not terminals? Believe is in the second paragraph. No, 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 don't get me believe. You, you got to tell me. Okay, right here. Okay, second yeah. paragraph. Ah, from like, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, Brian, you have it there? The temperature correction and adjustment factor shall be permitted to be applied to the impasse for the temperature rating of the conductor. If the corrected and adjusted impasse does not exceed the impasse of the temperature rating of the terminations in according with the provisions of 110.14C. What they're saying is that you make your adjustment and your correction based upon the 90 degrees C. And what they're and they're trying to say it, I don't like the way they say it, but don't forget, you had to size the wire to the terminal. Yep. You size the wire to the terminal, put that to the side. It can't be any smaller than that. So or, you know what, take the wire that you size the terminal and see if that wire can still be used for the application. And that's what it's saying. Well, yeah, you do this, but don't forget, you still have to size the wire 110.14C for that application. Right. Okay. All right, so 31015B has to do with... Brian, I think I'd like to move this, this rule right here, right above, so I can easily see that. Okay. And then same thing, the other one, C1 goes up here. So B1 has to do with ampacity correction. And it has to do with ambient temperature is below. If the ambient temperature is below 78 degrees C or above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the ampacity changes. So Mario, let's go to 310 table, 310.15 B1 at 9 degrees C. And the, the multiplier of 1... That multiplier one, if you take a look at it, Brian, let me know when you're there. What is the temperature no. range? 78 through 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So 78 to 86, the, the, the correction is one. At 90 degrees C, Brian, only the 90 degrees C. Which one means there is no change. So now if you made it cooler than 78 degrees, then your ampacity will actually be greater. Because... If it's cooler, well, that means that then you can put more current to get to the ultimate temperature that you're going to get to. Yeah. So if you happen to be placed in a location that's always going to be cool, well, you can put a smaller wire possibly. If the temperature is elevated, let's take a look at that. Well, if it's 104 degrees, let's use that as a standard number for the class here. If it's 104 degrees, well, then you have to reduce it because you've already added temperature to the conductor without even carrying any current. Eric. So I was wondering about this. We were talking earlier. One second, this, before Eric goes in there. This morning. And I'm here. Hold on. Hold on here. I'm here watching everybody and everything else that. And then I see Eric, and I've known Eric for, for so many code cycles, and he gets a certain smirk in his face. And I'm thinking, oh, do I really want to call Eric? And that's where I'm at right now. So let's see what we have going here. <laughs> Eric? Well, you know, you started off the conversation by saying if I'm in a colder climate, I can, the ampacity of the conductor can be increased. But I'm wondering if I can ever use it because I still have to comply with termination. Uh, requirements. Perfect question. It has nothing to do with termination requirements. This has to do simply with right, what is right, the right. ampacity Pacity. of a wire. Right. It's one of seven pieces. Okay, the ampacity is this. Of uh, the terminal is that. The continuous load is this. The overcurrent protection is this. Bump, 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 bump. And then we have all these. Okay, which one is going to make them all? Okay. The largest, right. Which is the one that's going to meet all of the requirements that we need. Yep. So that's a good point, but we got to be careful. We're listen, multiple choice question. I have a wire, la la la. What is the conductor opacity? Well, I don't know. 
Not but, like, well, what size breaker would you put on there? You know, how do I know where the terminals are in? And we don't want to go. Just yeah. answer the question. The, the beautiful thing about most of what we're talking about for a test preparation scenario is these questions are very simple to answer because in order to answer them, because this is such a complex topic, they have to spell out every single detail for you so you can just go, mm, that one. Yeah, they can't ask you what size wire would you run to the circuit and give you the variables. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, just have to, they have to spell it out so that you can literally just go down a column and go, um, that's the answer. Eric? Yeah, the other thing is when, when I was on the test uh, writing examination board in the state of Texas, our lawyers told us that we had to have a reference for each question that we asked on the exam, and it could only be a single reference. And so, therefore, when wow. we asked ampacity questions, wow. we could only deal with one of those seven one topics. One code rule. One code and, rule. And we work hard in our graphics, and sometimes we struggle, is that we want our graphic to cover only one code rule, not multiple right. code rules in a graphic. Okay, that's good to help us understand. All right, back over here. So, if you have the ambient temperature, maybe we can show some kind of heat. I don't know, we can't, but if it's ambient temperature, then we go to the table that we just seen, and then C has to do with conductor adjustment. Let's go over to uh, C1 table. We haven't seen that table yet. Okay, and that's a table if you've been doing code for a while. Um, and same thing with the other one, B1. Here's our C1 table right here. Okay. Well, if it's three conductors or less, and Brian, if we're going to see, that was three, ten, four. So four to six was conductors. It three? What was the one? No, it was three, ten, sixteen that said three wires. Yes. And no ambient more than three temperature. Wires, ambient temperature. And it was 86, three. Yep. And then now, 31015 says, C1. well, if you're going to be having more than three current carrying conductors. Oh, no, the table referred to C. The right. table is the one that referred table to note. C1. Well, yeah, the right. table note referred to it, not, not the rule in there. So now we have three current carrying conductors. Um, for the purpose of this class, and, and unless we, we say something specific. Okay, let's see the numbers. Four to six conductors. 80%. Okay. If, it's, if it's three wires, the multiplier no is what? One. One. If it's going to be... Four to six, eighty percent. Four, eighty percent. Seven to nine, seventy percent. And then you can see the numbers. Fifty, forty-five. Right? Okay, and those numbers are, are are pretty substantial. So really, in most practical cases, you'd like to be able to keep those circuit conductors not more than nine conductors. Yeah. Because when you're adjusting it, Eric, the I'm sorry, we're adjusting it. Yes. Yeah, we're adjusting yes. it. We're adjusting it based upon the ninety degrees C, right? We size it based upon the 75 degree Five. C. So maybe if you take the 90 degree C and you adjust it and you bring it down, it will be sized sufficiently the same size that would be required that requires you for the terminal. But if you go too much of an adjustment, well, now the wire said that you only needed a three gauge wire, but we now need a bigger wire for other reasons. Yeah. And I just, we've said this, but I just want to emphasize this again. This is only the conductors that are carrying current. Not all the conductors we're talking about, hey, you want to keep it under nine conductors. It's just not nine conductors in the raceway because it could be yeah. coming grounding conductors or possibly even a neutral that doesn't carry current. So nine current carrying conductors, six current carrying conductors. Which means I don't count the equipment grounding conductor. conductor. Right. And in almost all cases, I don't count the neutral conductor, which we're going to talk about. Yep. We're pretty much counting the phase conductors. Right. So once we get the phase conductors, we get the numbers, we go there. All right. So now let's look at opacity. Three gauge wire, if you go to 9 degree C column, and everything is 9 degree C column. So Mario, how do we make a, no I know what we do. We go into table 31016. Okay. Somehow I got to point to the 90 degree C column for correction and adjustment. Somehow I have to write that in that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't yeah. want to go to the 60 degree C column or the 75 degree C column for correction and adjustment. So when I go to my table, I have to remind myself, is it possible, and I don't know, this would be great, is the table position in the code book in a way where it talks about that you use the insulation rating of the conductor? for adjustment and correction. Look at the other page. Where is the rule that says, you read it to us, Mario. Oh, that's 
over here in 310.15. Oh, it's over there. I was yeah. hoping no, it would yeah. be. No, it's like pages yeah, away. Yeah, I was hoping it was the opposite page, yeah. and I would yeah. circle that, and I would point to the 90-degree C column. Put an arrow over there. Yeah. <laughs> or go to table 310.16, highlight the 90-degree cell in a different color, right? Maybe in the bottom. See the, all that room in the bottom that's written in there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd write on there, conductor adjustment and correction is based on the 90-degree C column. And that way, and point up to the 90 degree C column. Highlight that 90 degree C column differently. Identify, I'm just trying to give you some kinetic tools for yeah. people to make a note because, you know, you might see it now, but all of a sudden you come back to the six months later, eight months later, and you're trying to remember, am I supposed to adjust and correct? And are you gonna remember, go back? And you know what? You make that note on the bottom. Sorry. You make that note on the bottom about the adjustment correction and then you put a code reference to remind you, where does it say that? So when somebody comes up to you, Boyd, you're like, uh, oh, I know where it's at. It's in, I go to table 3, 10, 16, I know I use the 90 degree C, I make the note, I make that reference, and I can go back to it, and I can find it. It's, it's when you're gonna have to prove something to somebody and something that you know that you don't use often, it's hard. Yeah. Okay, Boyd. Like I say, the, the majority of the time that I, I'll mention the 90 degree column is to say that the only reason it's there is so you know what to look for when you go to temperature and bundling adjustments. Okay, we gotta get going. I don't think we're, I think we're taking too much time here, but I don't know what to do, we gotta go fast. All right, here we go, ready? Back to the slide. Okay, three gauge THWN-2 is rated 115 amperes. Mari, I'm assuming you're looking at table 31016, verified that, nine degrees C column. And I had three conductors, ambient temperature 86. Maybe change between ambient temperature 78 to 86. Brian, on this little note right here. And then that comes out to be 115 amp wire. So if you're answering a code question, it's 115 amp wire. Continuously. Continuous. Right. Now, if I have an ambient temperature 110 and I have five current carrying conductors, well, then I'd have to go to 31015B for the temperature. And the temperature was 110. And Mario, take a look at that 110 at Point. 90 degrees C. By the way, I would cross out all the other ones on that table except the 90 degrees C, and I'd highlight only the 90 because that's the only one that we're going to use, and everything else we don't use. So the 110 is uh, Point 0.87. And then if I go to uh, 31015C1 table. For five current carrying five conductors, current carrying conduct 80%. 80%. Well, I'm missing the answer here. Am I not missing the answer? Oh, no, it's right there. I'm sorry, I'm missing. The red threw me off here. 115 amp at 9 degrees C, adjusted, I mean, corrected for the temperature, adjusted for the bundling, comes out the, this is an 80 amp wire along its entire length. Right? Yep. yep. And what I need here, I think, is we need to have this line, Brian, right here. I think, does it go all the way here? No? I'm okay. sorry. Does it go all the way here? Yeah, that's a shading needs to stop right Okay, there. you'll get yeah, that. You'll I'll make that note.